Hi there, welcome to the lab. Today I'm going to have a look at this uh, digital multimeter. It's a uh, Habotest HT123 according to the package. I ordered this meter off of AliExpress and this meter is part of a series I'm doing on multimeters that are under ten dollars. Just want to see what we can get at a lower cost. If you found this video to be helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Questions and comments are always welcome. The feedback is appreciated and it helps me figure out where to focus my activity. And this under $10 series is an example because I had a request or two to look at lower cost multimeters. Let's get into the box. Pretty simple. There's a pair of probes here. Fairly typical economy probes. The, uh, yeah, they're nice for economy probes. And then there's the meter here and a user manual. And it looks like I have to uh, cut into the package to get it out. And so there we have it. It's a Habotest Smart Digital Multimeter. This rubber exterior is removable. That's good because it'll help for the teardown later on. And a very short user manual. Nice large print and uh, all in English. So that's nice to see. I'm expecting I've got to put some batteries in here, so that's up next. Removing the uh, rubber outer shell reveals the battery compartment and a single screw. I can remove a battery compartment door. The unit takes two AAA batteries. And even at this low cost, it's nice to see a threaded ring here for the battery compartment door. Two batteries are in place. Cover goes on and the screw goes back in. All done. Let's put the rubber molding back on and we'll turn it on for the first time. Powering it up for the first time. We'll peel away the screen protection. So it looks very nice and we can see that it's in auto mode and there's a little pointer here that is moving between AC voltage, DC voltage, ohms, and continuity. And the other function that it can't automatically scan for is non-contact voltage. So this meter only really has five functions that it can perform. Now it does seem to have a, uh, a backlight. So that's nice to see. And a little flashlight. That's also nice to see. And that puts it a step up above another one of these sort of fully automatic minimalist multimeters. We'll start with DC voltage. Now because this is an auto meter and you can see that it's sort of scanning for different types of uh, measurements. When I connect the uh, voltage source, it's initially going to be a little confused. And in fairness, the range of this unit says that it can only measure voltage starting at 0.8 volts. And so you can see it's still sort of trying to decide what the input is. If I bring it up to half a volt, it thinks that it's in resistance at this point a little more. It's once again scanning around. The good news is, in line with its specifications, as soon as I bring the voltage up to 0.8 volts, 8 tenths of a volt, it now is showing that it's reading a voltage. So it does meet its specifications. I'm going to bring this up to 1 full volt. And we can see that 
the, the meter is showing uh, pretty close to one volt. I think that's uh, very good for accuracy. We'll bring this up now to five volts. And this is now showing 502. Uh, I'll bring it down to four volts just so we can, that's four and three, 301, 3.02. That's pretty good, and we'll bring this all the way up to 10 volts. And so 1006. I think that's pretty good for voltage. I think that's reasonably accurate. Uh, I wouldn't really be worried about the difference in the uh, hundredths of a volt uh, range. Now AC voltage. I've got the fluke here so that we can have some comparison with what the Habo test is reading. The power is not on yet, and we can see that as a result, the Habo test is currently interpreting this as resistance. But we'll turn the power on. And the Habo test responds pretty quickly. There's about, if we can compare visually, there's about a half volt variance between what we're seeing on the fluke and what we're seeing on the Habo test. I would expect though that for most casual usage of uh, a meter like this, the half volt discrepancy is, uh, is not something that would prevent me from using it. Looking at resistance now, the reference is gonna output 20 ohms and that's likely, as you'll see, within what uh, most meters would consider to be uh, a continuity gap or a, a short circuit and so the buzzer is going to sound off and so sure enough it's reading that as a continuity as a closed circuit it's also reading the resistance incorrectly I would say uh, well below the 20 ohms that's being output I'm just going to go up here to 30 40 50 60, 70, so they're finally at uh, 70 ohm. The uh, buzzer has turned off, but you can see that the meter is showing more closer to, uh, to 64, 63 uh, ohms. It's showing a K there, but with the uh, 0 0.063, that's, uh, that's in the ballpark, but not very close to 70 ohms. Let's bump this up to a few hundred ohms. 500. So at 500 ohms, it's reading a little more accurately. And at, a, at 1K, once again, uh, reading a little more accurately. So the inaccuracy appears to be at the, at the lower levels. We'll just bump down then to 100 ohms. Not too bad at 100 ohms. At 80, we can see a little more variation. At 70, more variation. And just by go below again, it's going to start to. Uh, I thought it would start to beep, but it hasn't. I guess that's because it's moved over into ohms mode as opposed to continuity. And then at 50, which is what I would have expected as a threshold, we can hear the buzzer going off, but now it's showing closer to 40 ohms as opposed to 50 ohms. And so I do think that the accuracy at low resistance ranges could be better. For continuity, I'm going to test both with the included probes, and I'm then going to switch over to using a pair of gold-plated probes, because I find that the default plating, the nickel plating on the probes that come with these meters tends to interfere with the ability of the meter to do a good performance in continuity. So let's see what happens here with these probes. So we can see that the, the unit is almost detecting it right away, which is pretty good. But to get the beep to sound, we've kind of got a... And you can see it's not sounding there. There's some sort of a contact issue. So they've got to be in contact for a while, and it's got to be a good clean contact. 
for the continuity. I've switched over now to the gold plated probes. And visually you can see that it makes contact senses almost right away. And it is faster to respond, although a little bit of a delay, it is faster and more reliable with the gold plated probes, which is always the case with these meters. Non-contact voltage is something that I assess by taking this plug and bringing it close to where the non-contact sensor is and seeing how long it takes to react. The only mode that this meter has, if we can call it that, is the non-contact voltage mode. And we get there by holding the button down. And so now it's in non-contact voltage setting, and I'm not exactly sure where the non-contact sensor is, so. Oh, that's really nice. I have to say that that's more sensitive and with the high and low sensitivity, that's much better than many other meters, even uh, more expensive meters that I've seen. I do like the non-contact voltage sensing on this meter. Very nice. Quick look inside the unit and there's really not a lot to see. You can see the jacks here. There's no input protection whatsoever, no uh, PTCs, no MOVs. Of course, probably wouldn't expect that in something at this price level. The main CPU here, uh, or microcontroller, is totally obscured, so we can't really tell what's there. We can see the LED. This is the flashlight LED, the non-contact voltage sensor, which is across the top here, which works pretty well. Um, the backlight connection, the springs for the battery, the uh, buzzer, but that's all. And uh, we can see here, circuit board here was originally intended for another Habo test model, the HT109L. Uh, this is more of a, maybe a somewhat updated version of that. It's more or less the same meter. And uh, that's about all there is. In summary, this is a decent device, albeit with fairly limited functionality. With the exception of resistance under about 100 ohms, accuracy is acceptable for the functions that it does have. I'm not too concerned about the slight discrepancy in AC voltage, as I doubt it would be a significant factor for users of this meter. Like all auto meters, continuity is slow and there's no dedicated continuity mode that would likely speed it up. Better probes only help a little. Non-contact voltage is very good and rivals many larger, more expensive meters. For troubleshooting around the house, this would be a perfectly fine meter. Its small size means it would be easy to carry around in a toolbox. It's safe to say that anyone serious about electronics would be disappointed by the lack of other measurements that are common these days, such as current capacitance and diode check. There's no internal protection, not even a fuse, so you'll need to be cautious when using it in a high voltage setting. If you found this video to be helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and until next time.